So today we're gonna go check out the home studio for Dave Klaus. Dave is a Grammy award winning record producer, recording engineer, and mixer who has such an awesome studio. I've been following him on Instagram for a couple years now because, you know, gas, I have some gear envy of some of his setup. You've probably seen it if you're on Instagram following people with crazy studios as well. I'm gonna read off some of the people he's worked with because it's incredible. Uh, Marin Morris, Shakira, Carrie Underwood, Gwen Stefani, Carly Pierce, Black Eyed Peas, and many more. He's got a bunch of Grammys, platinum records sitting around, so very, very cool tour, very successful engineer in the industry. If you've watched these tours for a long time, you'll probably recognize the building studio that he's in because we've actually done a tour here before, but the studio has changed hands, so that makes this one extra fun to go through and see what's changed. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you're not subscribed, we've got hundreds of tours on this channel. It's absolutely ridiculous. Before we go in, if you want a chance to win some brand new studio monitors, check the link down in the description. Our friends at Sweetwater who are sponsoring this video are sponsoring a giveaway for some brand new Cali Audio active studio monitors. And I decided to go with Cali Audio because at Dave's studio, you're gonna see he's got two different spaces. One is the main mixing area in stereo, and then he has an entire B room with a Cali Audio Atmos mixing rig. So of course, thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. Click that link to enter the giveaway and check out these Cali Audio monitors for yourself. Great monitors, very affordable, flexible for even a Grammy award-winning mixer to use in his studio setup. Now let's go check out Dave's studio. How's it going? I'm Dave Klaus. Welcome to Santa's workshop. Here this we are. is beautiful. What is it that you're doing for like the day to day in here? Probably 95% of my time I'm in here mixing alone um, between here and the Atmos room. Well, the live room, which is also the Atmos room. But yeah, that's most of my time. And I'm also cutting probably, I don't know, maybe twice a month. Depends on the project. Sometimes I won't, I'll go a month without recording anything in here, and then sometimes I'll go and it'll be weeks of making records. It just depends, but it's a lot of mixing. That's great. Well, this yeah. is definitely a really dialed in room, yeah. it seems. Thanks. It's, as you know, and most people, it is a never ending process. Yeah. Of just like looking around and tweaking things in the room. But I came to a great place. Like, uh, I, you know, you just, you mentioned that this is the, the second time, you know, you're in here the first time. And the main things that have changed, um, obviously other than all my crap, but is, is the treatment. Yeah. Um, and Graham over at Music City Acoustics did a great job, came in here and wow. you know, measured the whole thing and, and kind of built stuff <clears throat> that's very fitting for the space, minimally invasive, because it is kind of tight in here, but just makes it sound great. Really pumped with the way this room sounds, especially on the mains. It is, it's like, it could just pop, like these things go down very low, like I think to 15 or something ridiculous. Oh that doesn't gosh. even matter. Um, <laughs> but, and the room, the room holds it. It's cool, it's good. Where were you before this room and what was the situation like there? I was in a converted room in my house. So it was a mix room. It was a room in my house, next room. I made it a mix room, treated the whole thing. Um, and then we kind of ran out of space. It was another, it was a different house in East Nashville. We had another kid, ran out of space. We had actually, it's kind of a crazy story because we had purchased another property and had plans to build a room from the ground up. Yeah. And I'm sure you know, it like, it was a process and it actually started in 2020. So like the permitting offices closed down, all the things, it was just, it was probably a year of just like drama going back and forth, trying to build this room. Yep. And of course, like prices were skyrocketing. And this place actually was, it was never listed. It was kind of like this word of mouth thing. Like, oh, this person, you know, they have a, I hear they have a studio in the back of this really cool house. They might be wanting to get rid of it. Go check it out. Um, I went and came in here and hung and kind of dragged my feet a bit on it. And then finally my wife and I, we were just like, we need to do it. And you know, 
it worked out. We did a lot of work on the house and moved in this room and did a bunch of work on it. And it's just been great. It's awesome. It's such a great place to make music. So you said you're also tracking. So uh, you're both like full-time mixer and then also recording engineer going and cutting in other places as well as here? Sometimes, yeah, it depends on the record. I'm a firm believer in, you know, all the records that were made back in the day that we loved so much that records now were influenced on, right? Like 50s, 60s, 70s. People, there was like a crew that made the record and they started it and then they finished it, right? Yeah. There was none of this like throwing it all around all different things, which, which can be good because you get outside influence and different vibes. But if the vibe in the song or the project is trying to be steered a particular way. I'm a firm believer in I would want to record the thing. I want to track the overdubs. I want to mix the thing. And that. that's how you're like steering the ship from the beginning. It's not like, you know, the ship is put out to sea, the captain rows away and then someone else jumps on the boat and is like, okay, now I'm going to steer it to port or something, you know, like not knowing the boat at all. So it's been really cool to do that in this process. But you're saying about going other places, I probably go to other studios like once a month to cut. You know, if it's mm -hmm. like, if you need a bigger room than this, like a Ocean Way or a D or A, Blackbird, you know, um, mm -hmm. or you have too many players or just, you know, I was down at Lee Bryce's spot like two weeks ago and he's got this cool little barn at his property and we packed in like eight players in there and it was a whole vibe and like stuff like that's cool to get out of the room. I mean, I have to leave at some point, right? Yeah. But it's also nice to kind of bring it home to a place that you're familiar with. Totally, yeah. People, I mean, it's great making records here. It's just like we hang the, you know, fires in the backyard and drink whiskey out there and whatever and, bar and grill. So it's like a cool, it's a cool vibe to be able to have that kind of family home sense here, you know. So this is a separate structure on the property, but it's you're not in the house. You no. get like your own little zone. You never have to go in the house. It's, yeah. Uh, there's a bathroom, kitchen here. It's just, you're completely separate. It's got its own entrance. It's it's a good setup for that, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And you're you're right here in East, which is like mm -hmm. a dream. Yeah, I'm super like jealous. Yeah, it's gateway to Lachlan Springs. It's like right, <laughs> right in the beginning of Eastland. It's good. It's a great neighborhood. That's awesome. Yeah. I saw the Marin Morris record out there. I've yeah. seen some stuff you've shared on social media. Is there like a particular style of stuff you like working on? What are some of like your favorite and I know it's like, oh, you can't yeah, say it's... my favorites or this or that or whatever. <laughs> what are some projects that have been like really special for you to work on? Give me a little bit of the background on the, yeah, on the work. Because I see all those Grammys over there. Yeah, and, and that question you're asked is like, I like dread that question because it's like, well, I'm going to forget everything that I thought I would say about sure. this. Because there's, because I've been super fortunate to work on a lot of great records in mm -hmm. whatever amount of time I've been making records for. Obviously those, you know, those Marion records are special and that's kind of what, uh, brought me into this town and I'm very thankful for that. Dear friend of mine, Busby, he is just a, the most talented human on earth. So that, those records were very special to me. I worked a lot in my early days in like alternative and I actually made a lot of urban records and then I oh, kind of really? like went into a Latin world which I uh, made a lot, recorded and mixed a lot of Shakira records and that's where a couple of those things over there are and you know, they're just like very successful, passionate, worldwide artists which is so yeah. cool and then like i'm able to work with really great country artists as well which is like yeah. you would think none of the world's work but they all collide and it's so fun you know yeah and i made this record last year with a great buddy of mine super talented uh cameron james but with uh jordan shellhart and her first album primrose uh that we kind of worked on it over like a two-year period and it came out last year and she's unbelievably talented and that record we made a lot, we cut a lot of it here, most of it here, mixed it all. And it, I mean, that, if you should check that record out, it's incredible songwriting, incredible songs, great production. And she's now in Warner. Mm -hmm. uh, we made it before she was signed. So we were kind of just like, let's just do what we want to do. And, yeah. make it, and just make it as cool and as compelling as possible and not conform to any box. Sure, yeah. You said it's called um, Primrose? Primrose. It's her first record. It's her only record she has right now. That one was very special, at least, you know, what I could think of in recent time because sure. we were just kind of like, let's just make it feel good to us. Yeah. Uh, which is so important and so infrequent yes. nowadays. You know what I mean? Less uh, boundaries. Yeah. There's too many rules. We all just follow these rules. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid rules. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, luckily, I don't know a lot of them, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Keep it that way. I am eyeballing all of this cool stuff. Yeah. Keep it family friendly. Really admire 
how you have this stuff laid out, but let's walk through it a little bit. We're in the control room. Right? Yes, this is the control room. There's, um, well, the studio is this, uh, this ISO, another ISO, and then a live room. Um, I don't know if you want to, we can check them out real quick. Yeah, um, sure, we'll do a little walkthrough. Uh, this ISO is like a great little vocal, whatever, acoustic -y. The tracking space, which I recently, I think a year and two years ago, added Atmos in this room. And I wasn't sure how it was gonna be, but it's actually turned out uh, so great. I have these, uh, same guy, another plug for you, Graham. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, made these, we kinda, I brought them in this room and was like, man, I, I wanna keep it so I can cut in here and I want it to feel live enough to cut drums or like a roomy guitar or keys or anything. But I also need to bring it in to uh, accurately do an Atmos mix. So I have all these, you know, he made these for me, which uh, when I mix Atmos, they're all set up around me in this mm -hmm. super, you know, absorptive side. But then when I cut, um, I flip to this kind of like, yeah. sun, you know, this is like the sun room, Western Memphis thing, the pegboard. Yeah. And it's so cool, man. It's been so versatile and so great. Those are great. To be able to have both. Um, and the Atmos sounds so good. Uh, it's not like a vacuum. It's very real and live. You know, if I cut drums in here, I can, there's so many different ways I can make them sound thanks to the, you know, all of these like moving panels and everything. Yeah, uh, it's, it's nice. You've got like the concrete floor, wood on yeah. the walls, the panels, but then the brick over the. Uh huh. The a lot of wall. different, like the wood is maple, so it's pretty porous. The brick helps a lot. Like you could, you could put a drum kit right here and literally face a mic at the brick. Yeah. And it sounds like New York City drums, you know, because there's so many of those rooms, that's like <laughs> what you're used to. And put a mic, hang, hang it from up there, and it's it's got the, you know, like the small wooden room crunch. Yep. Uh, it's super cool. You know, if, once I finish mixing a record in Atmos, a whole album, uh, I'll usually try to bring in like the artists and label and producers and whoever, and we'll do like a nighttime, like wine and whiskey, I have a bunch of couches I put in here and we'll listen down to the record in Atmos. Um, and it's so cool, man, to see people. Cause yeah. you know, Atmos is like, people hate it, people love it, people don't know what to think about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's very rare to listen in this setting and yeah. it's, it's really cool to experience your music when it's done properly in an actual room in like a, in a hang setting, a low pressure. Yes. Uh, so it's, it's fun in that aspect. This is a really great sized space. So this, I think this part was originally the garage, right? <coughs> this was like the garage. This uh, section that was like an apartment or something. Mm -hmm. um, and they were connected between this ISO and there's another ISO over there, which is this ridiculously tight awesome drum room yeah you can just like smash the crap out of drums in there and there's no space and it's brilliant it is very comfortable in here it would be nice to especially when you're mixing or whatever and have a couple people to you totally know, you're not like yeah sitting on each other's lap or whatever yeah. so i see you got the cali audios yeah and then what are these so ones those are strauss um those are the i have a, it's just a mirrored setup from the ones in my control room um strauss yeah and i only have these in here uh, it's just a 2.1 in here because if I'm ever doing Atmos stuff on records that I didn't mix, uh, I know these so well, it's kind of like my reference point. So I can flip to them, listen Got to like the ref, it. and then spread them out to the Callies. And the Callies are great. I'm actually learning to love them even more. At first, two years ago, the whole Atmos thing was like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, so these were actually so inexpensive, these, the Callies, and I'm actually really digging them. Are these the LP or the N8? The ceilings, the heights are different than the... Oh, right, right, right. These, yeah, these are a little smaller. Uh, these are the eights. These are probably the sixes. The whole thing was like, maybe I'll swap them later if I get super into it, but I don't think I ever will. I mean, they're just, I'm digging on them. It's whatever's flat and that you you know and can relate to. You still got some instruments in here for tracking. Yeah, a bunch of keys. Is on this in, here? You bring this? This was here. This was, this is the one Mason and Bam thing that came with the room. Mason and Bamlin. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's some. It's like 29 or 30 something. I don't know when it was made. It's some old piano wow. that it has. It's small, but it's actually really dark, which I love in pianos. So it's, yeah. it's cool. Some, this, this is a Wurlitzer? Yeah, that's actually, uh, I wouldn't. What? I just, um, just obtained that. 
That's cool. Uh, like two weeks ago, and it hasn't been properly set up yet from when it came off the truck, so it needs to. Sounds good. Yeah, it's got it has a vibe for sure. Okay, some guitars, some drums, some extra. Are are you you a musician yourself? Uh, I am, but it's as uh, I think when I moved to town, I became less of a musician because <laughs> there's too many yeah. good musicians. So I yeah I pin myself as not, but I still have fun and you know. It's still a good time. All right. And then uh, I'll, I'll just highlight this little thing because I love this record. Yeah. Uh, this is the Marin Morris a Hero record. record. When when did you work on this? I think that was 15. 15, really? Wow. And when did it come ago. out? Mm, maybe it was 16, yeah, when it came out. You know, a lot of records are impactful for my career. That one, you know, changed my life a lot just because of what Buzz and I did to, were able to do and then what that album kind of did and for her and... Yeah, it was cool. The drums on Rich. Yeah, wow. that's... Yeah, was that's, that Aaron Sterling? Aaron Sterling, Sunset Sound. Um, we cut it out there, actually. Just yeah. Aaron. Um, yeah, massive. Sounds Dude. so cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's like one of my favorite mm -hmm. kind of vibes. Yeah. Can we go just a little bit deeper? I know you said Graham did some of these panels, yeah. but I'm also seeing these tube guys. Yeah, so the tube guys are actually kind of a recent addition. I was having some problems with low end control in the room, uh, like super low, like below 70, mm -hmm. um, which turns out was was actually really cool while tracking because you get this like monstrous low end. In oh, right. Room. But it needed to be reined in. So GIK, I think, you know, you could just buy them pre-made and they are, massively effective for that purpose. Uh, there's the rezo traps behind the LRs. Each one is a specific frequency that it's trying to kill a bit, but uh -huh. these two traps are uh, did a huge thing. And now it's like kind of really spot on to where I need it to be. That's uh, crazy, man. Yeah, really recommend them for uh, if you have, you know, if you don't want to do an invasive, like this room, I really didn't want to do a permanent thing yeah. because of the, you know, versatility for tracking. Seen lots of tubes over on Making Records with Eric Valentine. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Eric. Tube master, yeah, it's great. I mean, that's, he used them because they're so effective, you know? And it's nice that it's a separate space. It's not like, yeah, I'm doing everything in the same yeah, space. Yeah, and, and this way I can have people in there doing Atmos, like setting up Atmos and doing a lot of the heavy lifting for me mm. while I'm working in here, um, mixing. Yeah, that's So great. it's actually great to have the separation. This is, one of my favorite things. You've got a ton of analog outboard gear, really mm -hmm. special gear, which we'll get into in a sec. But then you also have your desk out of your way, out of when what I mean is out of the speaker's way. Mm -hmm. And you have a sick controller, which is really clean and down also out of the way. Yeah. Nothing triggers me more than like big meter bridges blocking half of the speakers. Oh yeah, that's that was kind of the number one thing here. You know, I don't have an abundance of space making records. If it's not easy and convenient, like I just won't use it. It yeah. just won't, you know, so everything had to be kind of like near me, yeah. but also out of the way of my ears. Um, There's a feeling with that too. Yeah. Like an aesthetic. Yeah, it's just like right, right at me. These things are really special because they just like move all around if I need uh, them to. Oh, cool. Uh, and like I had them so they're not connected to each other because this, you know, like I'll take this and if I'm cutting at a studio and I, I'm like, oh, I, re I would really like my unfair child there. I'll, I just pick this thing off the, the moving wheels and it comes oh with Oh my God. <laughs> so that was like the in initial idea behind it. That's so cool. Let me just, yeah. hold on, let me grab my fair child real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's cool. How long have you uh, been using this thing? I used to have two. I just got rid of the second one maybe okay. five months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was a project I did with Eric. Eric and uh, Buzz, we were talking about this uh, Gwen Stefani record back in, oh, man, it must have been 2000, maybe 19 or something. I forget at this point. It was basically right after the Mark II, I think, came out. Of course, you know, I was mixing the thing. Eric had tracked it, Eric and Buzz, and you know, it's like, you gotta get this thing. It'll be great for the the, the bus, the two mix on all this stuff. And sure enough, I got one and it was. Yeah. <laughs> and I got another because I would use that on the two mix and then the other one on like drums or vocals and everything. And it's so great. I mean, it's almost basically every single song I work on, it's on some aspect of it. That's um, great. And then there's like a little extension down there at the bottom. Yeah, right? this is a, a new thing he started to put out. It's unbelievable. Uh, it just turns the, I mean, this 
uh, to begin with, the versatility compared to a regular Fairchild is ridiculous because of the attack and release times and mm. um, being being able to, you know, throw it and feed forward. But now this just adds like it's it's unbelievable the difference uh, the stuff that you can do. Yeah, so you got a little mix dry wet. Yeah, the mix control, the the high you know impact. high pass, the side chain, and then this is like something I've never seen on any other compressor variably change between feedback and feed forward control. Wow. Which is just makes it like, you know, turns it into a hundred different compressors and then output, which is oh, yeah. <laughs> um, crazy necessary for people, which I presume are most people in this setup. If you didn't have output control and you wanted to hit this hard, there's no way you'd be able to have enough headroom in Pro Tools. It would just distort the inputs. Got it. Um, so you really need, unless you're on a desk and it's coming back to a desk and you can turn the line inputs down, that's a big thing for this, the addition of the output. My question, because I think this is going to be a workflow I'm doing similarly. Yeah. Hardware inserts. Yes. Everything is that I'm using in Mix World is in hardware inserts and preset. And like I had mentioned before, it needs to be so quick and easy for me to access. I can't, there's no way yeah. in any on earth that like I'm a plugin to, yeah that i'm going to go and patch something in mid mix and I'll also yeah like on average we'll work on like five songs in a day different songs or something so wow. um it has to just be so simple and yeah. that's another reason why i won't own stuff that obviously there's some exceptions that you'll see but stuff that's not indented i'm oh, just like right, won't yeah. do it because you can't you can't recall it Yep. And, you know, and it's just, and a lot of things I'm recalling from song to song constantly. And it's so easy for me to just, I write down the notches, you know, write in the comments and just do it without notches, no chance. That's smart too, using the little comment section on the track. Yeah. So I have the hardware inserts and then, uh, you know, I have a summing, like a double stage summing thing. And, and it's all just accessible via, you know, hardware insert plugins and routing in here. Yep. So it's all recallable, all, you know, there's no little template, no funny business. Yeah. And then I see you've got the links. Yes. Is this like a couple 32 by 32s or yep. something? Um, the Aurora ends, they're great. I've, uh, I went through a couple iterations of this type of interface before I landed here, like the uh, Orion, I think. Yep. I had at one point, uh, didn't really dig it that much. So landed here and it's, it's been great. It sound great, they're reliable. I mean, what else, you know? Yeah. What else do we need? And then you're hitting uh, the Burl B32. Yes, it's either <clears throat> this, the purple guy, um, or the Burl, uh, I, and that's all routable in Pro Tools. Depends if I want to get tubes or not tubes, um, the transformer or tubes, or both. Um, and it's just all selectable, and then it all goes out to either my VT7 or the Obsidian. It's the Harmonic Culture. Harmonic Culture is the brand. The Purple okay. Buster is, is the name of the summing. Summing, okay. Yeah. Is that 16 channels? 24? What is it? 12. 12. Oh, or interesting. Or 16. I don't know. I only have 12 hooked up. Got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, it doesn't cool. matter. You don't even need that much. This song, I'm only, you know, using, I guess I'm using 16 outputs, but yeah. That's cool. So you can just quickly <clears throat> switch between. Yeah. yeah, summing. I could either sum it in the tube, sum it in the in the transformer, or sum it in both, or not at all. Sometimes, I'll often audition none. So like digi summing. Yep. One or the two, or two or both, or whatever, until I get a vibe, and it's like, oh, that's it, and I just run with it. Because you can, because cool, I'll yeah. have things in the session that aren't running through there, that are summed in here, and yeah. things that are, you know. Yeah. Um, obviously, delay compensation has to be like figured out with all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it's all in the template, you yep. know, you load it in, you get to choose, it's cool. So as we, we just saw in the, in the Atmos room, the Strausses, I think they're subwoofer pros. They're like made specifically for, I talked to the company to get the crossover point right, which doesn't even matter anymore because I'm actually using a Trinol for base management, um, okay. which has been great, uh, but they're awesome. I've had them for a lot of years, uh, and yes, I do have the paper white guys next to them, which I can't let oh, go of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I love the setup. Haters I like will hate. I, I like <laughs> Innocence, and I like them close and simple. Yeah. Like that. Um, They're kind of like my true north of like, you know, what, of mid, mid world, mid range. Even though the Strauss is what makes them so great, is the mid range is so, 
is like perfect on them. This setup is, is really great for me. Are these Strausses like three separate things that you set? No, there's yeah. actually, it's a two thing. This is like the, the Strauss and then these are the, the low end. <clears throat> and oh, okay. the, I think that the crossover point right now is at like 50 on the subs, maybe 55 or something. Um, I mean, you can get just endless volume. There's no issues there. It's, it's great. And then you're coming through this dangerous controller here. Yep. Dangerous right. controller. It's kind of just been like a, you know, just a really strong ship. There's been, it's got no bells and whistles. It's just yeah. reliable. Analog. Yeah. Um, okay. And what's the stream deck? How are you using this for your workflow? Uh, so this kind of came into my workflow in the last a year, maybe a, this year last year um and it's a lot of like session setup it's a lot of like rx stuff i kind of set all this up with the plugins i'm not like the all oh, my plugins are here and that's what i use oh, I, right, right, I, don't, right. I don't do that it's i can you know with pro tools search plugs you can just do it so much quicker for me but yeah. it's a lot of like session setup and like uh audio suite stuff makes my oh, life right. easier yeah, yeah yeah that's yeah. nice yeah like i can click a track it's like it needs to go to my drum bus and it'll color it, send it to the drum box, put a plug on it, put a bunch of sends, all those things. What? Yeah. So oh, wow. So you can kind of like set a com list of commands on a yeah, button. Yeah, you can just set them all up. So like whatever wow. it is you do, it has what you need on it. And for me, that's how I use it. And it's great. And it's awesome. You know, especially when you get all these sessions from people with just a lot of crap, you can clear plugins off. You can cut like copy plot all the things like yeah. just takes multiple clicks to one button if i could mix more efficiently I'd, i'll do anything yeah i'll sell my soul <laughs> <laughs> okay now on this table here this yeah. is this is beautiful first off you got a couple plants i love yeah thanks it's my hotelier wife planted me out yeah me some oxygen in here exactly <laughs> well yeah that and a little green and just you know yeah feels good um, and then you've got your S3, right? The S3, yep. I've had it for a bunch of years. It is very reliable and amazing. I'm super hands-on with it. You know, all my plugs just get routed to the, the top, like custom routing that I created for all the things I use the most. I do so much on this thing. Like I'm very tactile, hands-on, automation, like stuff has so much automation and moves and it's all done sure. here. Absolutely. So it's a huge, a massive part of my workflow. It's kind of weird because I will struggle on a mix without this compared to any of the gear in here. Like I can lose any piece of the gear, all the gear and be just fine. But this, I will like feel like I am working with one arm and one ear. You know, I don't know why that is. It's just like the touch thing is so important. A phone with an app. Yes. For your this, love meter. So I actually just, this is funny because it's probably a week old. I love it. This thing, but it would take my mind off of what I'm doing. And this yeah. just kind of keeps me in line. I mean, I, it's so new, it may it may go or stay. Now, is that like an old phone you had and you're like- It's a, an old, I did not buy a phone for this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually was, it was an old iPhone and I was, I was about to sell it on eBay and I would checked out Decibel and I was like, oh, let me use it for this for a bit. And it's cool. I mean, I, I don't live or, or die by luff levels. Sure. Um, yeah. There's certain levels that I like to be near that feel like a record to me. Someone were to ask me like, oh, in an ideal world, would you like to just be at like negative 10 or 11 or whatever, you know? And if I'm there, it, it tends to feel a little unfinished to me in the okay. modern world, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. where we're making modern records as we're looking at it, say negative 11 now, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's like, uh, it's nice to just kind of be able to glance over and not have to be like, okay, hold on, let's Open get in here thing. and look. Yeah. Um, Especially if it's feeling good or whatever, and then mm -hmm. you're like, okay, and you look at it, and now you're thinking about it. Yeah, and and in like it makes your brain off oh, often. Yeah. Like so, you know, sometimes I'll be I'll be really in deep with something and and losing perspective. And before this, I would open like a plug and see the lust level, and it'd be hitting like negative five, and I'm like, ah, it's just everything's too much. Yeah, and I'll back it off, and I'll be like, that's why. And it's in, in the moment, and you're at a couple hours in you're losing perspective and yeah. you're not really knowing that. Now that I'm on this other side here, looking at this gear over here. Yeah. I see uh, we got a couple of the racks. Walk me through how you think about this stuff and what do you, is it yeah. you kind of live on the same stuff So in the mix um, generally? The gear I have is generally specific that it's stuff I can't do in the box. And I, as I say that, 
I'm looking at three things that I can do in the box. Like <laughs> the, you know, the UA distressors are great. Uh, all the 76 crap, the remakes are great. This is this Mohawk thing that I got so long ago. That's actually pretty cool because you can flip, you can transformer flip. It's got the two transformers, the Carnhill and the Edcore. The, it's basically like 33, 609 and Eve or like the Edcore, the transformers that are in all the um, 76s. That's cool. I don't use this this rack at all for mixing anymore. Oh, this is all for front end tracking. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's usually like these are on like the coming from the TG2s and room mics or something. And this is this is my snare chain basically everywhere. And I'll take this when I'm tracking other rooms because this is my snare tracking chain. Oh, wow. Um, That's cool. What is that thing on the bottom? That's an EQ? It's an EQ, yeah. It's this old Orban thing. Um, one channel? One channel. What? I used to use it all the time mixing, but I found a plug that does it really cool. Uh, but still, on the, I love to use it on the front end. You can just target specific frequencies and snare and juice them way up or kill them or do whatever you need. And, Cause it starts to, it's not clean. It's like the least clean thing in the world. Yeah. Why own a clean thing when you can do it in the box? The box is plenty clean. Sure. But yeah, it gets gritty. That's dirty. cool. It's like, it basically does what Spectre does, you know? It's like, look, this is a perfect thing. It's solid state. It's on the solid state adding mid range. Yep. That's uh, what that thing will do on the snare. And then this is a very special rack to me. It gives me a lot of juice and oozy ness. <laughs> I have now found something to replace in the box. Waves does this, uh, but doesn't get, when you push it, it doesn't get as tubey and cool as this does. Um, okay. And this is just, you know, really hard to deny. I think they're in parallel. Oh, okay, nice. They're separate. Stay level. What's the name of the top one? Uh, it's the it's the TG the RS one two four by RS EMI. So it's it's that uh you know Beatlesy Abbey Road thing. Chandler mm -hmm. makes it. Um, and you're getting color out of that. A lot of color on that thing. Could I get color like that in the box? I'm sure I could. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's in the template, and I immediately know I want something to sound a certain way, and I know that will give me it and it's immediate. Yeah. And I know that if I push it hard, it's going to give me more love. It's not going to fight back. It's all about just the immediacy of, oh, I know that will do the thing now. Whereas like I could search and fiddle in the box for it. For me, it's just instant gratification, both those things, you know? And then I'll, I'll, I'll put this on vocals a lot of the time as well. I actually think this song, the vocal has gone through the unfair child and then also those, but they're in parallel. Yeah, it's all dependent. This is like a vibe or song, so it, it called, it, at least in my mind, for it, more of a tubey thing. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to put a link to your Instagram. Is there a website or anything else? That... Uh, I do have a website. It's a bit outdated at the moment, but uh, my Instagram. Yeah, it's great. Santa Claus. Yep. Santa Claus is the Instagram. It's uh, my last name and kind of ran with it, um, but it's good. <laughs> it's kind of like, a, you know, like Christmas morning receiving a mix, hopefully. Yeah, it's, it's the excitement of Christmas morning when you're <laughs> receiving a finished record back. Well, it's memorable. I I always remember when I go to look you up. I Two things pop in my head, Unfair Child and Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to be, I mean, I think I was the only person other than Eric that probably had two yeah. for a long time. Uh, but then when I, you know, I, I got the VT7 and it kind of took its place on the mix bus in a lot of forms and I've been in love with it but it, yeah I mean Unfair Child is un, it's just undeniable what it can do yeah well thank you so much for inviting us in and letting yeah. us check all, all thank your you. stuff this has been great yeah I'll uh, put the links in the description and everyone else hit the like button thanks for watching thank you see you later